Geometric data is a useful tool in designing for human variability. Unfortunately, gathering the data can be expensive and time consuming. In order to represent a specified target population, designers can synthesize data that are representative of anthropometry. In the previous video, we discussed basic methods of synthesizing anthropometry. This video will continue to explore synthesizing leg lengths for the NHANES population using data from ANSWER. Accurate predictions of anthropometry measures can be created through the use of linear models. A linear model finds a best fit line for the data. Linear models also show us the correlation between data, R squared, which is the amount of variability in the data that can be explained by the predictor. So, using stature as a predictor for trochanterian height can account for 75% of the variability in the data. To create trochanterian heights for n Haynes using linear regression, we apply the linear equation using the n-hane statures. Similar to using proportionality constants, using this method results in a lack of variability in the population, as these trochanterian heights are created with the assumption that two people of the same stature would have the same leg lengths, which is a false assumption. Since we would like our synthesized data to have the variability of a real population, we're going to include a term called residual variance in our linear model. Residual variance is the variance of the data that is not explained by the linear regression equation. We can predict this variance by using the answer data. For each data point, there is a difference between the trochanterian height of the person and the trochanterian height that the regression model would predict based on that person's stature. This difference is called the error. The linear regression equation is created by finding a line such that the average error is zero. The standard deviation of the error shows the variability of the data. If there is a normal distribution of error, we can simply place this error randomly back into the regression equation to account for this variability. So, the linear model from ANSWER is adjusted to include a random term with a mean of zero and the standard deviation of the error. This residual variance term gives the synthesized anthropometry the variability of a real population. Linear regression equations can have multiple predictors if one is not sufficient to accurately predict the data. Some anthropometry, such as hip breadth, are not well correlated with stature. If we look at the R-squared value for predicting hip breadth using stature, we see it is only 0 0.20, indicating that stature only explains 20% of the variability in the hip breadth data. This is because a person's weight has an impact on their hip breadth. Since weight and height are correlated, Body Mass Index, or BMI, is a useful tool. BMI is calculated by weight in kilograms divided by stature in meters squared, and is essentially uncorrelated with stature. So, for populations where only the anthropometry tables describing the data are available, the stature and BMI data can be generated separately and combined to create new populations. So, if we include BMI and stature in our regression equation for hip breadth, we can account for 70% of variability. Unfortunately, the ANSWER database is created using a military population and does not have subjects with high BMIs, which are indicators of overweight and obesity. This means that the hip breaths predicted for obese civilians are less likely to be accurate than hip breaths predicted for healthy weighted individuals. This may be detrimental to their accommodation in resulting designs. Using these methods, it's possible to create a realistic population with a level of variability that may be found in your target population. The ANSWER and NHANES databases can both be found online. A link to a worksheet with a step-by-step -step mathematical description of these methods is also provided in the video information. There are more advanced techniques that can be used to consider the relationships between anthropometry sections. If you would like to learn more about anthropometry synthesis methods, please check out the following papers, which can be found at the Open Design Lab website.